Dr. Walter Lemo is a certified naturopathic physician who embraces integrated medicine. His undergraduate education is in biotechnology and biological sciences. He says when something physically or mentally goes wrong with a human, men often ignore the symptoms. Women are more likely to go see a doctor. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Walter Lemo to Studio 4 to tell us more. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure. It is true, isn't it? Men tend to ignore the lumps and the bumps and the headaches. You know, there's something about these men. I think it must be in that Y chromosome. You know, like <laughs> you we're, think? Made, we're a little deficient on that X. And so mm -hmm. and we don't know what that is from a psychological point of view, being men and brave and ignoring all these symptoms. But uh, we have to realize that we're a little bit different than men, uh, than women. And um, so, like, I, you know what I was kind of funny and reflecting on was when I was in school, you know, hear about those risk calculators, like looking at your cardiovascular risk throughout the years and, mm -hmm. and you're looking at blood pressure and weight and if you're a smoker. And just the fact that I was a man, my risks were higher than, than the woman. And the woman was like, ha ha, you know. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so, so it's important. And I think uh, we, the distaff side, uh, still outlive you. Yes. I think. That, that's what I hear. Uh, that's what I hear. Mm -hmm. So uh, what tests should every man take on a regular basis, starting what age, 20, 30, 40? Yeah. Tests that you should ask your doctor to do for you. So they say in terms of like uh, uh, ages, like 40 is a number when, when the risks start to go up. Mm. We're obviously we're living in a time now though where people are a bit more sedentary, we're seeing, seeing things more younger. So in terms of basics, you know, you have like your cholesterol, you have your blood pressure, you have your blood sugar, and, uh, and so those are some of the cores. Mm -hmm. And then as you get like say past 40s, you start getting into like well, maybe other, other prostate issues and so you hear about this PSA. And then, and then going down from that, say into your 50s, you got the colon cancer things. And so and that's, you're getting into those, you know those cards mm -hmm. that you have to look at your stool and they look for blood that no one wants to do? Mm -hmm. Those are important to kind of get done. And you are an oncologist, a naturopathic yeah. oncologist, mm -hmm. so you deal a lot with men who are dealing with cancer. Yes, I see that all the time. It's, um, it's like say, when we mentioned, say, just one thing about the colon cancer thing, that's, that's one kind of cancer that I see in my practice that's always missed. You know, it's missed a lot. And so and that simple little card thing to look at blood or maybe getting mm -hmm. a colonoscopy is really, really important. And we're finding that maybe even men, like that they need, may need to be screened a bit younger than the classic 50. There's some research to suggest that for some reason. And then, um, and then, and then obviously with the prostate stuff, you know, like it's like I, I see these group of men where say, oh, okay, they have high cholesterol, ah, no big deal, you know, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they got this uh, blood sugar thing going up and then all of a sudden like, you know, they, they, they do their prostate, they get checked for a biopsy, a prostate cancer, like, okay, I think I'm a bit more uh, attentive now and, uh, and wanting to mm -hmm. make some changes. Are you a fan of the PSA test? Well, here's the thing with that test. There is some truth to it to some degree, but there's also some kind of big questions about it. And um, as we know, there's been some really interesting data come out, mm -hmm. and there's this big task force that came out saying, you know, should we be even doing the screen test at all? And, and the reason for that has been some really big reviews out there looking at, is this affecting like mortality outcome in prostate cancer? And say so the big trial in the state showed, you know, we don't really see a major difference in Europe they saw a difference, right? And the difference was, say, if you're screening 1,400 men, you're gonna, you're gonna find one, mm -hmm. right? And then say, out of the men who are di diagnosed, you need, to help, you need to screen 48 to help one of them, right? Number needed to treat their cold. So when you're looking at that, you're going, well, yeah, you are helping a group out, but look at the level of potential harm that you're causing. So now what I'm realizing what's happening with this PSA and, and, and urology, it's becoming a bit more holistic, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, let's kind of sit down, let's decide, let's kind of see what we can do. Because we have to remember one thing with the PSA. Yes, it's prostate specific, but it's not disease specific, okay. you know? So meaning like, you know, you can have a PSA going up, you hear about, you know, people being sedentary and, or uh, like a truck driver sitting all the time their PSA mm -hmm. going up or a motorcycle rider, you got like a prostate infection. These things can all creep up. But so, but we have to realize it's a, it's a test, but you have to kind of customize these things. And um, so now, for example, what, uh, what, like what you, what you want to do, so say for example, someone is in their 70s or 80s and if, they're, if PSA is going up, are you going to worry that much about them? Probably maybe not as mm -hmm. much, you know, 
versus say someone in their 50s or 40s. Right. That's another demographic. And then what you want to do too is like, then you're wanting to see, okay, if they're doing this PSA, what's the trend of that? Is it kind of slowly going up? Is it fast going up? So that's about customizing. Sure. It's, uh, I have an 80 year old friend who has prostate cancer and he said, look, I'll die before the prostate cancer kills me, so yeah. I'm not doing anything about it. Don't know if that's smart or not, but as you know, some men uh, are wor so worried about sexual dysfunction mm -hmm. and I know that doesn't always happen with a prostate operation, mm -hmm. but they would rather have the cancer yeah. <laughs> than worry about not having the sex. Absolutely, but it, it, and you bring up a good point because part of the, the, the concerns with a PSA when you look at the treatment mm -hmm. is that what are the risks, right? So say five in a thousand men, there's risk of death, you know? And, right, the, yeah. and then you got all the sexual, the urinary, the bowel issues, mm -hmm. and that could be up to like say 300 out, out of like a thousand men. But uh, I think for me what the PSA kind of reflects as well is that for men, pay a bit of attention. It's like the cholesterol going up. So so there's, you know what, I, what I'm observing as a trend with the PSA? It's kind of in some ways when men come into my office and they have this elevated PSA, I'm going, yeah, this is something to pay attention to the prostate, but to be honest, I'm actually more worried about your cardiovascular risks. And there's been some connections mm -hmm. showing that say, the stiffness in the arteries is actually correlated with the PSA, just like being overweight, just looking at inflammatory sure. markers. And that's why what you're seeing, so you hear this term called like active surveillance that's being talked about in men with prostate cancers mm -hmm. with this PSA, meaning like they got this prostate cancer and they said, well, just hang tight and just, you know, until a next checkup. Well, here's a great opportunity where these men are kind of like, okay, I'm not gonna sit around, I wanna make these changes. And you know what they're finding? The changes that, are, that you make with say general lifestyle, low fat diet, exercise, watching your stress, can actually even hold that PSA. Really? So yes. uh, stop smoking, we know yeah, that. Yeah. I knew you were going to say that, so I said it for <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you uh, very much. Eat less, mostly fruits and vegetables, yes. all the things we hear and hear and hear, all yeah. good, all preventive. Yes. And isn't prevention the way to go, if you can? What about genetics and something like prostate cancer, heart disease, mm -hmm. any disease, really? Well, obviously, family history is a, is a variable, mm -hmm. and, those, and those are what they would call like higher risk cases. So say, you know, you're talking about the heart disease, you're talking about say colon cancer, prostate cancer, et cetera. There is like a, you know, genetic or family connection, I guess. And so those are the ones where you'd have to monitor a bit more closely, intervention becomes more important. And say when I mentioned the tool about with the PSA, you know, say if your father had it and et cetera, you know, those are ones you could monitor these trends in these people sure. a bit more closely. Okay, cardiovascular disease, biggest mm -hmm. color of men or not? Well, they say, uh, in terms of men, uh, yeah, car cardiovascular. Lung, colon. Yeah, so in terms of the number one killers, it's like cancer still is, right? Okay. It, but in heart disease, um, it's, it's up there. Mm. And how is it linked to hypertension? How is it linked to what we eat? How is it linked to how much you've used your heart? Mm -hmm. uh, because I know the heart is a muscle, yes. not being the doctor, but the heart's a muscle. And if you were a top athlete and you ran at the top of your game, uh, can you do damage to your heart? Well, you know, you bring up a good point about activity and hearts, right? So yes, there's a crowd where, it reminds me of, a, of patients that I, uh, a few patients that I saw were saying, you know, I think I gotta start uh, getting more active. They've been a bit more sedentary for a while and then all of a sudden they, they do some intense physical activity, mm -hmm. then bingo, they had a heart attack. You the know? all or nothing guy. <laughs> yes, the mm -hmm. all or nothing guy. So, so yes, in terms of like heart disease um, and activity level, that's a core fundamental thing. But the key is, is, is that you have time to do these things. It's not about making a change over like the, uh, an intensely over a short period of time. It's gradual over time. And so, so, um, so again, the core things with the fundamentals with the heart. We know with the blood pressure, mm -hmm. it adds a, a, a stress load on the kidneys and on the brain and everything else. So it's important to do activity levels that you're not stressing that out too much but at the same time you're doing a fundamental uh, mm -hmm. activity. So as an example, some it, movement doesn't have to be a lot. Even like going for an hour, say three or four times a week of even a brisk walk is better than doing nothing. And you know, one other thing too, is like as a segue with activity with men, you don't hear about women with Kegels, yes. right? So you know that- <laughs> Some people don't know what that is, but <laughs> yeah. I do. Elevator up, elevator down. <laughs> That's right. So Kegels is like, is a lot of women know it's, it's like, it's uh, you're doing these muscles to help with the flow uh, mm -hmm. of the urine, right? Mm -hmm. 
men, they're not talk about that in terms of movement, right? So, so I'm always telling men, well, try to, try to pull up the boys, so to speak, you know? And, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. And, and it's something really that um, an exercise therapist that I know, Joanne Morgan, a local one, who's really mm -hmm. kind of pushing that. So men, in terms of movement, not only cardiovascularly wise and walking, but at the same time, they can also be doing things. So internal organs, yes. massage the internal organs, yes. work your internal organs. Uh, yoga would be good, Pilates would yes. be good. Uh, strengthen the core, just like women strengthen their cores. Yeah. And I think that has a factor too, you know, and that's what ties into the sexual issues and more. Sure. It's about stagnation and flow. The more you move, the better mm -hmm. it is. It makes sense. And uh, uh, if you need some advice, you do the Kegels when you're at a stop sign. Yes. <laughs> you're in the car. Doesn't you know, so if you're pulling up the boys, as you suggest, yes. do it at a, do it when you're in the car and you're stopped. Why not? Okay, yeah. Dr. Walter Lemo, our guest, he's a naturopath, and we'll come back and talk more about Thrive Alive. Mm.